It's been a while since we built something cool in the menu department. So while I was browsing awards for some inspiration, I landed on this site. It earned site of the day and even went on to win site of the month in 22. If you have been following the channel, you might remember we actually covered this awesome content slider a few months ago. But this site has a lot more cool stuff going on. For example, check out this overlay menu. I really liked how the menu opens, the whole site tilts and shifts downward while the overlay slides in with this sleek rotating motion. It feels super smooth. Since it had been a while since we explored any modern menu concepts, this felt like the perfect excuse to build one. So I spent a few hours and managed to recreate a pretty close version of the animation using GSAP. You can see it has all those animations. When the menu opens, the content gets pushed down and the overlay glides in with that subtle rotational motion. I also added all the micro animations inspired by the original site like the animated underline on hover and the way the preview images change when you move your mouse over the links. When you close the menu, everything transitions back out with the same kind of tilt and motion. The layout is fully responsive too. On smaller screens, I have hidden the image previews since over effects aren't needed on mobile but of course, you can tweak that if you want to keep the image visible. If you enjoy builds like this, drop a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other micro projects along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start by laying out the structure of the elements we'll need. We'll begin with a navbar that stays fixed at the top of the page. It will have two main parts, a logo and a toggle control for the menu. The logo is just a simple link. For the toggle, I'm using two paragraph elements with unique IDs. This will help us switch their visibility later when the menu opens or closes. Next. We have the menu overlay. Inside that, I am adding a wrapper called menu content. We are doing this because the clip path effect will be applied on the overlay itself while the tilt animation will be applied specifically to this content wrapper. Now we will divide the content into two main sections, the menu items and the menu footer. The menu item section will use a two column layout. On the left, we will place the preview image container with a default image inside. On the right, we'll break it down further into two areas, one for the menu links and one for the social media links. For the menu links, I'm adding four divs with the class link, each containing an anchor tag. Each of these links include a data image attribute, which we'll later use to detect which preview image to show on hover. For the social section, I'm adding four divs with the class social, each holding a link to a different platform. Moving on to the footer of the menu, it's also split into two columns. Each side holds a few extra placeholder links to mimic the structure of the original site. Finally, below all of that, we have the main website content container. For now, I'm just adding a hero section with a large image and an h1 title as placeholder content. But of course, you can expand on this with more sections later. And that's it for the HTML structure. Let's move on to styling next. I am starting by importing the interfont from Google Fonts. We'll use it as a fallback. Next, I am resetting the default styles by setting margin, padding and box sizing on all elements. For the body, I will define the primary font, falling back to enter and then send serif. I am also hiding any horizontal overflow to keep things tidy when animations push content around. Images are set to cover their containers using object fit cover and we are giving them full width and height to avoid any distortion. For the H1, I am using a large font size reducing the letter spacing slightly for a bold clean look. The line height is set to 1 to keep things tight and balanced. Links and paragraph tags are styled with a consistent font size and font weight. I have removed underlines and disabled text selection for a smoother interaction. We are also giving links and text a position relative that's going to be useful when we add those underline hover effects later. Now onto the nav bar. The nav is fixed to the top of the page and spans the full width. We are adding padding aligning items with flexbox and giving it a high index so it always stays above everything else. The logo inside it will have a bolder font weight. The menu toggle is clickable area that contains both the menu and close labels. I am positioning them absolutely inside a fixed size container and setting up the will change properties to prepare them for smooth transformations later. Moving down to the overlay itself, 
menu overlay is fixed to fill the entire screen with a dark background and a zen index below the navbar. Inside that, the menu content is relatively positioned and fills the entire overlay. We are using Flexbox to center everything and setting transform origin to the bottom left so we can later apply those tilt effects. Again, we'll use will change to optimize performance for transforms and opacity. The menu items and menu footer are both full width sections with padding and spacing between elements using gap. We then define the two column classes. Large column takes up more space using flex 3 and smaller column takes up slightly less with flex 2. Inside the menu, the left column holds the preview image container. We give it a fixed width and height with overflow hidden. The image inside is absolutely positioned so we can animate it independently. The right column is where we place our menu links and social links, each stacked vertically using flex column layout with spacing in between. Each link and social is padded slightly and styled with a simple clip path, setting us up for reveal effects. The actual anchor tags inside them are given wheel change and a smooth color transition. Menu links are styled with a large font size and tight letter spacing, while social links use a muted color. On hover, the color changes to white for contrast. Now for the footer, it's absolutely positioned at the bottom of the overlay. The right column in the footer arranges the links using justify content space between. Then we add a really nice animated underline effect using after pseudo elements on all anchor tags. The underline is hidden by default with transform scale x0 and appears on hover using a smooth cubic bezier transition. Next is the container which wraps the main page content. It's positioned relatively, takes up the full viewport and has a transform origin set to top right. This will let us animate it in sync with the menu. Inside it, we have the hero section. It's full width and height padded and aligned to the bottom using flexbox. The background image is positioned behind the content using a negative Z index. The H1 inside the hero section takes up 80% of the width. Now, we add some default hidden states for the animations. The menu close is initially hidden using opacity 0 and a light transform to position it off slightly. We are also adding the link and social anchor elements initially by pushing them down with translate Y and reducing opacity. This way, they can animate in later. The menu content is also given an initial off screen and tilted transform with reduced opacity to prepare for its animated reveal. The menu overlay is clipped completely using a clip path to make sure it's hidden by default and expands when triggered. Finally, we handle responsiveness. At screen widths below 900 pixels, the H1 gets resized and the layout adjusts to take up the full width. We also hide the left column with image preview since it's not needed on mobile and remove all hover underline animations. That's it for the CSS setup. We have laid the groundwork for both the look and the interactive behavior of the menu. Now we are ready to bring it all to life with JavaScript. We start by importing GSAP at the top. Once the DOM is fully loaded, we grab all the key elements we'll be working with. The site container, menu toggle, overlay, content wrapper, preview image container, and all the menu links. We also set up two flags, is open to track the menu state and is animating to prevent overlapping animations. Next, we add a click event listener to the toggle button. Every time it's clicked, we check the menu state. If it's closed, we open it, otherwise we close it. This keeps our logic clean and avoids unnecessary conditions. Before jumping into the actual menu animation, I'm setting up a few utility functions that will help us keep things clean and manageable as we go. The first one is called cleanup preview images. Now, the way our preview system works is every time you hover over a menu link, a new image is added to the preview container. Over time, if we don't manage that, 
these images will keep stacking in the DOM. That's not great for performance and can create weird visual bugs. So in this function, we first select all image elements inside the preview container. Then we check if there are more than three images in there. We loop through and remove the oldest ones. Specifically, we remove just enough so that only the last three remain. This keeps the transitions feeling layered and smooth without cluttering the DOM unnecessarily. Next, we have got reset preview image function. This one's simple but important. When the menu closes, we want to clear out any previous overstate and return the preview area to its default. So we empty the container and then create a new image element, set its source to the default image and append it. This ensures that when the menu opens again, we are always starting with a clean base image. Now finally, we'll animate the menu toggle labels, the ones that say menu and close. I am calling this function animate menu toggle and it takes a boolean called is opening. This helps us decide whether we are going from menu to close or the other way around. Inside the function, we first grab both text elements by their IDs, then we animate the currently visible one out. We move it slightly, rotate it a bit and fade it out, just enough to make the transition feel intentional. This is done using gsaps2 method and I've added a small delay so it happens just after the menu starts animating. Once that's done, we animate the other label into place. This time we reset its transform and opacity values, again with a delay, so it fades in right after the first one fades out. Alright, with these three functions in place, one for cleaning up previews, one for resetting the image, and one for toggling the label, we are ready to move on and start building the open menu animation. The first thing we do is check two conditions, if the menu is already open, or if another animation is still running. If either is true, we exit early. Once we are clear to proceed, we set is animating flag to true, so nothing else can trigger while the sequence is running. Now, the first animation we run is on the main container, that's the entire page content. Using GSAP, we rotate it slightly, move it down to the right, and scale it up. This gives that feeling of the page tilting backward and making space for the menu to slide in. Right after that, we animate the toggle label, switching it from menu to close using the helper function we wrote earlier. Then we animate the menu content itself, which initially sits zoomed out, slightly rotated, and faded. Here we reset its transform values back to neutral position, rotation, and scale, and bring the opacity to 1. This makes it feel like it's rotating and sliding forward into view. Next, we animate the menu links and social links. These were hidden by default, but translate by 120%. We now bring them up to their normal position and fade them in with a bit of delay and a stagger so they animate one after another. Finally, we reveal the overlay by animating its clip path. We are changing it from a collapsed shape to a large angled polygon that expands past the screen bounds. This gives that nice sweeping entrance from the top. Once all the animations are done, we mark the menu as open and reset the flag back to false so the UI is interactive again. Now let's handle the closing. The close menu function works almost identically, just in reverse. Again, we check if an animation is already running or if the menu is already closed and return early if that's the case. We set the flag to true again to lock the UI while the menu closes. Then we animate the container back to its original state, rotation to zero, no offset and scale back to one. This brings the site content back to its default position. We switch the label from close back to menu using the same helper function. Now we animate the menu content. This time we tilt it slightly, push it up to the left, scale it back up a bit and fade it out. It exits the same way it came in, just reversed. Then we collapse the overlay using clip path, bringing it back to a completely hidden shape at the top. And once that's done, we reset the menu state, we mark it as closed, unlock animations, and hide the links again using gsaps set method and call reset preview image function to bring the preview container back to its default image that's our full menu open and close logic up next we'll set up the hover interaction for the image previews we start by looping over each menu link using for each method and for every link we add a mouse over event listener Inside that, the first thing we do is check if the menu is currently open and if an animation isn't already running. If either of those checks fails, we just return. That keeps the hover interaction from triggering during transitions or while the menu is still closed. Then we grab the image path from the link's data image attribute. We also add a small optimization here. We check if the image is being hovered is already the one that's currently visible. To do that, we grab all the image inside the preview container and compare the source of the last image to the one we are trying to show. If it matches, we don't do anything. This avoids reanimating the same image unnecessarily. 
Now, if you made it past those checks, we create a new image element, set its source to the one from data image attribute and apply a bit initial styling. We set the opacity to zero, scale it up slightly and rotate it just a bit so it animates with a nice pop. We append that new image to the preview container. Right after that, we call cleanup preview images function. This makes sure we don't stack too many images. It keeps things tidy by removing older ones and only leaving the latest few. Finally, we animate the new image into its place using GSAP. We fade it in bringing the opacity to 1 and reset scale and rotation to their defaults. The animation runs over 0.75 seconds and uses a soft teasing so it blends in smoothly. That's it for the hover preview logic. Now each time we hover over a menu link, the matching image fades in with a clean layered transition and we keep the DOM light and responsive behind the scenes. And there we have it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.